Hey, this is Travis. I'm telling you about the entire onboarding journey to Web3 and to get into that ecosystem. And today we're just going to be focusing on the first step, which is connecting your bank account to a centralized cryptocurrency exchange and uh, actually, you know, converting your fiat money, your US dollars into cryptocurrencies on this exchange. So I'm going to go over to this tab right here and we're going to talk about the steps in, uh, in order to convert fiat into crypto. So uh, just a little background on uh, how I did this and how I structured it. I actually looked at the experience of doing this on uh, four exchanges, Coinbase, Kraken, Gemini, and Crypto.com. These are all uh, centralized cryptocurrency exchanges. And um, we're going to focus on Coinbase, although I'm going to refer back to some other exchanges later on in this video. But Coinbase was the gold standard for this. And you can break down this, this journey of, again, going from US dollars into crypto into four different phases. We have sign up, verify, fund, and buy. So let's get into what each of these mean. So for sign up, it's really simple. Um, you, you go to the website and it's just like any other product that we're used to using. You uh, put in your um, email and password to, and, uh, and obviously get an email verification here. We are setting up two-factor authentication with a phone number and that is essentially signing up. Although, you know, you give some more uh, information over here but I won't get into that right now. So this is a really standard sign-up process um, where things start to get complicated and where we are going to start to see some user friction. And by the way, there's a lot of user friction when going from US dollars into crypto. Uh, this is a problem because everyone has to do this at some point. Every new Web3 user at some point is going to have to purchase cryptocurrency and by far the most popular place and most straightforward place to do this is a centralized crypto exchange like Coinbase, Gemini, Kraken, everything I just mentioned. But um, we talk about as product designers, user friction and how do we reduce this user friction. So we're going to see a lot of examples of user friction in this journey right here. Now, the next phase for going from fiat into crypto is something called account verification. This is different than a lot of other Web2 social media apps that we use. Like you just saw that I signed up with my email and password. Uh, we do this with Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and all of that. Um, Google, really any other service you can think of online right now. Uh, it's different for these exchanges because they're essentially bank accounts. And since they are regulated entities, and they're, most of them that I looked at are incorporated in the U.S., they're subject to U.S. regulations for um, a bank, essentially. And uh, one of these is, it's very notorious in the crypto or Web3 community, it's, it's called KYC AML. So KYC stands for Know Your Customer, AML stands for Anti-Money Laundering. Uh, essentially what they're requiring banks to do is to verify the identity of people who create accounts on uh, to use their banking service we wouldn't want to we wouldn't want our regulated banks to be financing used to financing terrorism uh, which is or, um, or, or or for any other criminal activities so this is one reason why KYC is required to know your customer. The bank has to KYC know your customer. They have to verify my identity. And then also I'm sure it's uh, partially for tax purposes, right? So money is going to be flowing in and out of these accounts and the government is going to want to keep tabs on that so they know what is taxable income of mine. So let's get into what this verification process is right here. It first... Um, I have to put in my uh, driver's license and this was actually a good UX in terms of uh, how I could do this. You can use your mobile camera or webcam. I use my webcam 
and it's pretty nice because you can just hold your ID up to your webcam, take a picture of it, and then it uploads that image file to their database. And I'm sure they have some service on the back end that scans it and verifies it in some way. And um, now they're verifying my ID right here. Also, I wanted to go back up to right here. I have to give some specific information about myself, like date of birth, first and last name, um, my residential address, and then also what I'm going to be using the, oh yeah, what industry do you work in? And then um, how much crypto do you expect to buy? So uh, and then I believe on some other exchanges, I had to give even more personal information like social security number. So all this is to say that just in order to create an account, and this is all before I can even purchase crypto, I have to give very sensitive private information over the internet to a company that, let's be honest, it hasn't really become a household name yet. Even though Coinbase went public, uh, they had an IPO in 2021. They're definitely still not a, um, a household name. Not many people are really going to think initially to trust Coinbase, although uh, this is probably changing in some ways. But, you know, just think about other exchanges like Kraken, something called Crypto.com. Just the word crypto is sketchy to a lot of people. They're not really going to trust that and put their information in, especially you think about older people who aren't really um, as savvy on the Internet as some others. And uh, they're, they're going to think about putting their private information in. I know older people who would be definitely averse to this. So this is a big user friction point um, for onboarding to a centralized crypto exchange here. Now, the next thing, the next phase is to fund your crypto account. So we've signed up, we've verified our identity. Uh, the government's checked that I'm not on some um, government watch list or most wanted list. I'm not a terrorist. I'm not a criminal. Um, so I've gotten all that. And now I can do this fund phase right here where you're basically transferring money from your traditional bank account. You're transferring U.S. dollars into your uh, Coinbase or crypto exchange account. And as you can see here, there are many different ways you can do this. PayPal, debit card, wire transfers, and um, this bank account one on the top here. Coinbase is by far the best at this because they use a service called Played, which really quickly connects my Fidelity bank account. It could be anything. So you, uh, you type your bank, your, the type of your bank in here to your Coinbase account. You are going to put your login credentials in for your bank account. Um, there's You go through a verification process. And now I'm linked up and I'm ready to purchase crypto. And this took like 30 seconds for me on Coinbase. But I want to, um, and again, this is why I say that Coinbase is the gold standard for a crypto exchange. Because the others that I looked at, Crypto.com and Kraken, they didn't have this service called Played to for me to quickly connect my bank account so what i had to do was do a wire transfer from my fidelity into um into kraken for instance and this took like it took like 48 hours or 24 hours for it to land and i had to manually do this so I, it's like i was i created an account on kraken and then i had to open a whole new other tab and um manually set up this wire transfer, putting in a routing number and all that. And then there was some really scary verbiage uh, in the middle of this where it's like, if you didn't get the information just right, if you didn't get the routing number just right to your Kraken account, then the funds can be permanently lost. So it's saying that even if I'm transferring thousands of dollars from my bank account into Kraken, that th these funds could be permanently lost if I don't do this process correctly. So needless to say, this is going to scare a lot of people and it's a massive friction point for the exchanges here. So um, the last phase is to actually purchase the crypto. It's really easy on Coinbase. Once I have my account connected, I go to buy crypto. I choose the cryptocurrency that I want to purchase, in this case, Ethereum, obviously select the amount of US dollars, and then I'm just confirming right here. OK, so this process took only like five minutes total for me to do on Coinbase. 
Um, but again, the other crypto exchanges, it took me about um, 24 to 48 hours. And that the, the bulk of that time was spent waiting for these bank transfers to go through. The last thing I want to say in terms of user friction, going back to this account verification step, you don't know how long the account verification is going to take. On Coinbase, I think it was like 30 seconds to a minute. So they really have this process down. On the others, I think it took more on the order of 10 minutes and maybe a couple hours for Crypto.com. And Gemini, I tried to onboard to Gemini about six months ago, and I still have not had my account verified there at this point. So it could have been something that I did. I could have put in the incorrect information in there, and I just never heard back from them. But in my opinion, that's their problem. The onus is on them to tell me that I hadn't put in the right information and to go back in and actually get my account verified correctly. So um, again, the user friction there is that they don't explicitly tell you how long the account verification is going to take. And it just leaves this question mark in the user's head when they're first onboarding. Like, how long is this process going to take overall? You know, I came in here to buy like $50 worth of Bitcoin. Why do I have to go through all of these steps? And I'm not even sure how long it's going to take. Is this going to take 30 minutes or is it going to take hours or days or what? Okay, so I just covered how to go from your fiat currency into cryptocurrency on a centralized exchange. Now in the next video, we're going to look at creating a crypto wallet and then transferring this crypto from the exchange into the crypto wallet.